The competition is held over 11 days. Historically, in the World Championships, there have been six events, the downhill, the giant slalom, and the slalom. This year, two events have been added, I might add, controversial events. They're combined competitions of downhill and slalom, again, for both men and women. All the world's top racers from all over the world have gathered here in Schladming, Austria. 36 nations are represented. Hello again, everyone. I'm Frank Gifford, and the weather that has plagued these championships has cleared. It is an absolutely beautiful alpine day. We're moments away from the second run of the men's giant slalom, and a fascinating story has developed there. We'll get to that in a moment, but later today, we'd like to remind you, we'll have same-day satellite coverage of the downhill, one of the great spectacles in all of sport, and, of course, featuring Franz Klammer and the racing Austrians and, of course, the wild and woolly Canadians headed by Steve Podborski. But our story right now is the concern with the second run of the men's giant slalom. No American man has ever won a gold medal, an individual gold medal in the Olympics or the World Championships. We have a young man in that position right at the moment. But it's not the story we thought when we knew that Phil Mayer was going to have his first confrontation with the great racing squid Ingemar Stenmark. To tell you a little bit more about this fascinating story, I'd like to call in my fascinating colleague, Bob Biatti, <laughs> former coach of the U.S. Alpine Ski Team. Bob, and this has really been some development. Well, I'll tell you, I'm pretty fascinated at the moment. Steve Mayer is in uh, first place. Everybody was kind of, as you say, looking for Stenmark and uh, Phil Mayer. And uh, Phil Mayer had some problem. But Steve is, I mean, he's got a great chance. If he can have another run like the first one, he'll win a gold medal. And in that first run, Frank, he really uh, got off the side. He really did attack out of there. He was really fluid. When he got down to the steep, a little bit farther down, then he kind of had a little bit of a problem. But he kept his skis going right along, skied well on the steep, didn't really lose any time, and he's in first place. Actually, one of the fine runs Steve Mayer would ever have. Okay, then Ingemar Stenmark came down. And, you know, Frank, sometimes you get so prepared for an event. And Stenmark, of late, the last three or four weeks, has been absolutely fantastic. But for some reason today, he really was a little sluggish. He didn't really attack the course all that much. He, uh, he really felt his way down the course. Now he's going to have a second run, and you know what Stenmark can do. But for Phil Mayer, well... Sometimes you just can try too hard. He came out of that starting gate, and he skied very well the first few, first few turns, but then all of a sudden, he did a very elementary thing that a lot of us recreational skiers do all the time. He just sat back, leaned in a little bit. Maybe he was thinking ahead, and he was out of the competition. Really kind of a tough one. I bet he could race 2,000 events and never do that again. He hasn't fallen for two full years. Unfortunately, we still have the twin brother. There you see the twin brother, Steve, with the lead after the first of these run of the men's giant slalom. Bill Marot, of course, the Alpine ski director, standing with him. The standings once again, Steve Mayer with an opportunity to make American Alpine skiing history. He's in first place. The great Swede, Stenmark, is in fifth. The stage is set, and what a dramatic one it is. And now, up at the top of the hill, Ingemar Stenmark, who was in fifth place, 1.37 seconds behind Steve Mayer after the first run, is preparing to go. The course a half mile long. It'll move through 57 gates. It's hard to believe that only that time can separate the leaders, but such is the skill of these great skiers. Ingemar Stenmark has a great deal to make up. Of course, they reversed the order of the top five finishers, so he will be first on the course. You're looking at one of the great athletes ever to compete in any sport, Ingemar Stenmark. On the course. And Frank, I'll tell you, the other four know that this is the guy to beat, even though he is in fifth place. He's got 1.37 seconds to make up over Steve Mayer, but Stenmark is capable of doing that. He's that good. I, I think he'll attack a little bit more in this run, too, than he did on the first one. We've seen him over the years come from way back. Look at how close he's getting to the poles. Actually, in a way, he might be getting too close because those poles hitting him on the shoulder can kind of throw him around a little bit. This is not the run he made in the first run. He is going all out. He has to do it to make up that time. The running time on the right, it'll stop somewhere along there to give you an intermediate time to tell you how fast Denmark was on the top. And we'll, we'll only be able to use that to determine how fast the following races are. We might also mention, Frank, that the top part of this course is relatively flat. But in just a little while here, he's going to come on to a really long, steep, icy section. that's going to bring him into the finish. And it's there that you really have to ski well. Ingemar Stenmark, the winner of 66 World Cup victories. There's his intermediate time, 50.19. A little bit of trouble there. Well, as we said, he was a little sluggish on that first run, and he really got, does look a little bit sluggish right here, frankly, looking in this area. See those skis kind of skidding out a little bit? Having said that, he'll probably have the best time by about two seconds, but he does look a little bit sluggish. Three times the World Cup champion, considered the greatest technician in Alpine skiing racing today, Ingemar Stenmark, that's his time, 116.62. Ski racing is such a solitary sport. Stenmark can now only wait. Has he been good enough? Could he have been better? He'll have to wait to find out. And one can only imagine the thoughts and emotions 
of Steve Mayer. The next few minutes will be an eternity for this young man. Ingemar Stenmark waits at the bottom of the run here in Schladming, Austria. He was first down the hill in the second run of the Giant Slalom, and now he waits. And perhaps second guess is the first run that found him in fifth place. Four more racers have a shot at him. Let's take a look at one of them. Bojan Krizhai is on the course. Krizhai of Yugoslavia looking for their first world championship medal after the first run. He was a second and 2,600 behind. This is a good hill farm, Frank. He likes it steep he likes it icy. It's both of that, not particularly in this area, because as I said before, it's kind of flat up here, but it does get very steep. But the one thing about Krizhai is he's an outstanding technician. He really skis well. As a matter of fact, all the top fives do that, and that's probably why they're in the top five on this particular course where it is so icy. Veteran racer, 25 years old, had a fifth and a fourth place earlier this year. His best finish last year, a third place. But he did win a solemn race last year, so he's a good technician. Yes, he is, Frank. You know, that last year was kind of an off year for him because he really has had some, some great seasons. Some people say he's not aggressive enough, but it looks like he's really taking a pretty good shot at this right now. Denmark's time on the left up in the top holds up. He's a little faster than Frigi on the top. Well, he was a lot faster, about nine-tenths of a second, and I think that tells you a little bit about how exactly fast uh, Stenmark was in the top part of this one. That's something that Phil Mayer's going to have to consider. The giant bottom, very subtle, Bob, as you have pointed out. One little error can cost you so much time, but you don't see it. I mentioned Phil Mayer, Frank. Of course, I met Steve Mayer. And that is the time to be to take the lead of Stenmark. He does not do so. Stenmark holds up. Ojan Grigai in second place. And you just have to wonder what's going through the mind of Steve Mayer. No American man has ever won a gold medal in Olympic or World Championship competition. Andreas Wenzel on the course. Wenzel coming back from an injury a little over a year ago. He was really in these competitions, Bob, for the combined, but he had a third place finish after the first run. Well, from Little Lichtenstein, you know, they've got a lot of good ski racers. They, uh, they train with the Swiss team, and the Swiss are very good also of course 1980 as you mentioned he got hurt and there goes Vincent out of the competition, out of the competition. Vincent he, goes down hard he just got too close to that gate and hooked a tip it doesn't take much and of course when you're going that fast you're only about an inch from the poles in giant song watch him here you can see him come down he's in pretty good shape here now we see him come up he gets back on his skis a little bit right in there and he just can't get back on him again and there he is, hooking that gate. Tough break for him. He's out of the competition. The determining run for the medals here in the men's giant slalom. And they are letting it all go out. This fine technician, you'll remember him from our coverage of Lake Placid. He was the silver medalist behind Stenmark there in the giant slalom. And there's Stenmark. Bottom of the course, he is the leader. He has posted a time of 1.1662. That combined with his first run will determine whether the great Swede can come back after being so far down and on the top of the hill, Steve Mayer. And again, Bob, pressure on this youngster. A lot of pressure on him, particularly with his brother out of, out of the race. Such concentration. It's almost like the game of golf in some respect. It's such a mental sport. Only hundreds of a second, sometimes separating success from failure. Joel Gaspo, the great young Swiss racer, fought with his coaches earlier in the year, has pointed Bob to these championships. He didn't care about anything, and he is a fine technician. Well, everybody says he's good. He's very young, and uh, he's only 19 years old. He started the year by winning the first giant slalom of the season, but then he hasn't been all that great. And he said, well, he just was going to point for this one. I know what I can do. Now I'm going to kind of take it easy and really bring myself in a good form here. We'll see. I might say, too, he won that first race by over two seconds, so he can do it. Remember Tiny Heine Hemming, who won the giant slalom in Innsbruck, Bob? He's small like him. Yeah, he is, you know, and, and what we're seeing in this run, as I said earlier, is so steep and so icy on the bottom that the guys who are really good skiers, good slalom skiers, actually, have kind of an advantage over the bigger, stronger, lumbering guys who sometimes do well in the flatter giant slalom. Not so here. Now, that is the running time at the top of the hill of Gaspo. That is the intermediate time that we saw posted by Ingemar Stenmark. Stenmark, again, much faster than Gaspo on the top. Tells you a little bit about Stenmark's run, particularly on the top part of the course. Really, with uh, Steve Mayer standing up there ready to go, what he's going to have to do is really do well on the top part of that course. Full second behind for Gaspo. That's a lot. That's a lot on that flat. Gaspo working down through the lower gates. But we can't help but think what is going through the mind of Steve Mayer up on the top. He cannot think about Stenmark. He'll have to think about the course. Gaspo through the finish line. Time to beat to take the lead on the left. He moved into second place uh, ahead of Bojan Krijai. And Ingemar Stenmark holds on to the lead. Four racers have not been able to take it away. Second place finish in the bottom in the next to last World Cup event. Prevented Bell from clinching the overall championship. Seven. 
and slaloms and four GSs or something like that. The ultimate goal is just to win the World Cup, and whether if I have to be third every race to do that, that's fine. Right now, I just want to win races, and if I win races, hopefully I'll end up winning the World Cup. It's not a World Cup championship that's on the line right now for Steve Mayer. It's a world championship goal. And the man that he must beat stands at the finish line, Ingemar Stenmark. And here is Steve Mayer, pressure on him. Phil, his brother, thought to be the contender against Stenmark. Out of the race, here's Steve Mayer. Frank, could it be set up any better? We have Stenmark standing at the bottom of the hill in first place. It's Steve's race to win or lose. And I'll tell you, he's got a great shot at it. But he's got to do well on the top. He had a little bit of trouble right there. Of course, he came in with a second and 37 hundredths of a lead over Stenmark. He's got to really attack on the top. He can't afford to make any mistake up here. Fascinating that he's even racing, Bob. Considering the surgery he had, orthoscopic surgery on the knee over Christmas, back on the skis once again, and of course, having the lead after the first run. Remember, 1.37 seconds. That was the difference after the first run. I think we're going to know when we see this intermediate time how it, whether it really sets up well for Steve. Of course, it'll come up on your left. It'll be the intermediate time, the top of the hill, bring the Marsden mark. This is the running time now. If Steve there will get a chance to compare them up on the top. He's having a little bit of trouble. He's feeling just a little bit. He's slow on the top. Well, he's, he's, he's he had that up. cushion, however. He's only got about two tenths of a second to give up, so he's going to really have to have a great run on the bottom if he's going to take a gold medal. Final gates and Alpine ski races, great ones, have a clock in their head. They know how they stand in literally hundreds of a second. Steve Mayer down now through the bottom gates. He was pretty rough on the top, so he's going to have to get himself together and really concentrate and ski well on the bottom. Time to beat for Steve Mayer to take the lead. Is on the left. He does it. Steve Mayer's going to win a gold medal. Steve Mayer will become the first American man to ever win an individual gold medal in the Olympics World Championship competition. Unbelievable. What a great run. And look at the Swede, the great Ingemar Stenmark, nodding his head in approval. One great athlete approving the performance of another great athlete. And what pressure it was for Steve Mayer. Steve Mayer, known as a slalomist, not a giant slalom specialist at all. Coming off orthoscopic surgery over Christmas, making a fantastic run down the mountain. And we're going to go to Bobby Addy. He'll try and get a word with Steve Mayer. This crowd is delirious. At least those Americans who are represented here. Steve, congratulations for you. I know this means so much personally, and of course, it's so great for uh, U.S. skiing. But really, what does this run mean to you? Oh, I don't know. I skied well here last year. And last night, my rep came in and said one of the a uh, Swiss guy said that I deserve Phil is good. It was going to be Ingemar, Phil, and myself today. And knowing that other people had that much confidence in myself helped a lot, you know. And I don't know why I went so good today. I mean, it's, for me, this is unbelievable. You know, uh, Steve, naturally everybody's been talking about the confrontation between your brother Phil and Stenmark. And, you know, everybody that knows you very well knows how great you are. Did that bother you at all? Uh, sometimes I feel that I get left out. But in general, no. I feel has definitely dominated me. And... Phil, Stenmark's kind of dominated Phil for a while until this year, really. Uh, but it's just great to, to come in like that today and, and be in there. I had, yeah, uh, that's, for Giant Slam, that's the first win ever for me in international competition. That's great for me. Well, you've been knocking at the door a long time. How about when you were standing up there, down here at the after the first run and Phil went out? Did that put any extra pressure on you? Um, I, I wanted to see him have a good race, too. And I felt that he could probably be leading after that run because, I, you know, I radioed up, told him a couple things. And then when he went out, I, I just, I said, hey, you got to go out and do it for the family now. <laughs> I'll tell you, you should do it for the family. I know Debbie and your young daughter back home are really excited about this. She probably doesn't understand it quite at a month and a half years old. Great going to you. First American to win an individual gold medal in skiing, and I'll tell you, we're all really proud of you. All right, thank you. Once again, Steve Mayer has skied through all the drama, all the pressure, to get the United States' his first men's individual gold in either the World Championships or the Olympics. Dethroned, perhaps as champion, but magnificent nevertheless. Ingemar Stenmark takes the silver for Sweden. And for Boris Strahl, he skied from out of the pack to give Yugoslavia his first medal ever, the bronze.